some simulations of the diode rectifier circuits. Uh, the website here I'm using is lushprojects.com slash circuitsjs slash circuitjs.html. Uh, when you first open this website, uh, you get uh, a sort of default circuit, uh, which is a resistance inductor capacitor, um, a battery, a capacitor, and another resistor. Um, we're just going to uh, usually begin by making a blank circuit here uh, or grabbing a prefab one day, just a couple of uh, pre programmed circuits to demonstrate some of what we've been doing. Uh, the first will be under diodes and is, uh, of course, the half wave rectifier. I can uh, click on the function generator. So this is the AC power source. And if you wish, turn it to something that's uh, more resembling our 17 volt peak 60 hertz uh, output of our transformer or wall wart. Notice the, um, there's a single diode in one direction. Um, and it's chosen a load resistor that's quite low, 640 ohms, just, I guess, by default. Um, and uh, there's a couple things being plotted here. Uh, one of them is the AC source uh, on this oscilloscope trace, and the other is across this uh, resistor, 640 ohm resistor on this oscilloscope trace. Um, Let's, uh, just for the moment, I'm going to click on the diode, move it out of the way, and reports, replace it uh, with a wire. I'll put, draw, add wire, go to price, uh, lowercase w. Okay, now we see what an AC uh, power supply looks like. The current is flowing alternately in the clockwise and then the counterclockwise direction through the circuit. I'm going to slow the simulation speed just a little bit down. So clockwise stops and flows back counterclockwise. Counterclockwise would be the negative current flow direction, we'd say. And uh, once uh, it slows back, goes the other way, it would be the positive current flow direction. We call this positive because the voltage uh, across this uh, load resistor, in this case, is positive. And now it's swept and swapped back, and the voltage across that load resistor is negative. All right, so let's remove that wire. Let's hit backspace, then pull back in our diode. You have to hit spacebar to select components, then you can move it around with your mouse. There you go. And now let's uh, watch things unfold here. Speed up the, okay, there's our simulation. So you have a positive flowing current, uh, which means we're going in the direction of the diode, but then it stops. We try to come back the other direction, and with this ideal diode, there is essentially no current flow the other direction, so we have a flat line here on the voltage across the resistor until we begin going positive again. So the source is attempting to give us a positive and then a negative uh, current, uh, but it's only the one direction that is allowed to flow in the circuit. We uh, can pull out that diode. We'll just flip it around. Put it in the other direction. Now, of course, uh, we'll see the rectification in the other direction. Uh, we're only allowing the counterclockwise or negative currents to flow. Um, the positive current, uh, one you would expect a positive current, uh, and instead nothing happens, um, just like in our measurement with the oscilloscope. Okay, let's look at a full wave uh, bridge rectifier, also under diodes. It's the full wave rectifier. So uh, here you can see a 100 ohm load. I'll just leave the um, uh, AC power supply the same um, as a sort of a default value there. So slow the speed down and let's watch what happens. Again, the choice of this load resistor is kind of arbitrary. Um, 100 ohms is very low uh, for our types of circuits. Notice that the two opposing diodes are on at the same time. Right now, these two are on. When we have a negative current, and now these two diodes are on across from each other when we have a positive current. So let's look at exactly how that happens. So with the negative current, we come around, flow through the load this way, and return to the source this direction. With the positive current, we go through this diode, through the load, around, return diode, 
and then back to the source. And that's why the two opposing diodes are on it at any given time. Is it allows current to flow both in and out in each of two directions. And that's why there's four diodes in the rectifier circuit. One more we're going to look at that's already set up for us in uh, the Lush Project Circuit Simulator, and that is the full wave rectifier with a filter. Um, so again, there's a fairly low resistance load, in this case 430 ohms. We can have 40 hertz, a uh, five volt power supply, uh, AC. So we could just leave that alone. And uh, there is our same uh, diode bridge rectifier. But in addition, now we've added a capacitor at the output, just one capacitor here. And again, I'm gonna slow that simulation speed down just a little bit. All right, um, same thing as before. The two opposite diodes in general are on at the same time. First these two, and then these two. And it's that same current pattern we had before that's going on. The difference is that you'll notice that some current continues to flow even after the um, source has stopped. And that is because this capacitor discharges into the resistor keeping that current flowing. It does go up and down a little bit. More current does flow when it's being pushed through from the bridge rectifier side. Uh, however, if the capacitor is big enough, it still continues to push quite a lot of current through the resistor during the other phase of the oscillation when normally that current would be dropping back down to zero. And uh, that uh, little difference between when the capacitor is discharging and uh, when we're pushing current through the bridge rectifier is um, results in this ripple, which is a small difference in voltage uh, that basically comes from the capacitor's finite discharge time. So let's change that. Um, let's bring this all the way up to, by double clicking on it, up to um, um, one millifarad or a thousand microfarads as we're using. Now we're going to see with this large capacitor, the current's pretty much always flowing. Um, just the capacitor is getting uh, periodically strongly replenished, and our ripple is reduced uh, to very, very little. So this is what we observe in our filtered uh, circuits with a large capacitor. Remember, we have four 1 millifarad or 1,000 microfarad capacitors in our main filtering uh, part of the circuit, and that's actually before our additional integrated circuits, uh, which give additional uh, regulation by dropping the volts, uh, voltage down to 12 volts, right? So that's not shown here. Also, of course, not shown is the source of this 40 hertz, which is coming from a transformer over on the side of the circuit uh, in our wall wart. So a lot isn't shown here, but this is the basic idea. Now, if I um, reduce uh, by quite a bit, say down to 10 microfarad, uh, the capacitance. I expect the rectification to um, work, but to give uh, very high uh, variations. In other words, the ripple will be very big. There we can see that is in fact the case at 10 microfarads. Uh, we almost have full excursions as if there was no capacitor at all, which makes sense because that capacitance is very, very small. And take it all the way down to one microfarad, and we'll see, um, at least with a 40 hertz signal, essentially no difference pretty much uh, looks like the unfiltered full wave rectifier. And there you can see with the large capacitor uh, acting um, to flatten out the ripple.